are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with TELUS Stream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. And welcome to the show, everybody. It's nice to have you here. Jeff, nice to see you again. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. It's like it's been forever, and then all of a sudden he's here every week. I know. You can't get rid of me. Nice. Except for during COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now that we can be socially distant yet in the same room, here we are. So sure. this is... <laughs> uh, so welcome to our socially distant studio. Speaking of socially distant, Sasha has moved across the country. Some folks were asking, where's Sasha been? Well, Sasha has had to move out east, so speaking of a socially distant studio, she's actually putting together a bit of a makeshift studio in her house. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, so that she'll be able to join us through our community coffee breaks, and when she's able to come on the show, maybe mm -hmm. by a, a Zoom interview or uh, yeah. a kind of a discussion as well, maybe she could even participate in one of our category five crew conversations oh i think that'd be great wouldn't that be nice yeah i gotta admit i am a little bit jealous of where she is at because she's got very pic picturesque views on the east coast oh she's like overlooking the ocean oh, stunning and she's sending pictures and, and posting pictures on our discord server folks. Yeah. so if you're not already on our discord make sure you go to our website category5.tv click on interact and join our discord server she's posting photos of the iceberg as it drifts by yeah i'm kind of jealous that's cool like it just is it's so picturesque it's so beautiful i mean she's living on the east coast of canada where it really has kind of that vibe of um it, it, it there's so much culture there mm -hmm. tons and and you know as a ferguson i can really you know i really appreciate a lot of that culture and and she's you know they're, they're in like a crabbing community and there's lots of folk music and and just picturesque yeah. vistas of land and and one of those vistas belongs to her and her husband, Dave. See, I like that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Like that. But that's not tech. And that's, why we're, <laughs> that's why we're here. But tech, <laughs> it's interesting though. I mean, through this whole thing, we've realized that tech really keeps us connected. I mean, it, if COVID-19 had happened 10 years ago, what a different time this would be. Like, think, just think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. We're bringing you uh, a, a live broadcast from Ontario, Canada. And we're able to bring people in from all over the world. Our friends from production studios down in California mm -hmm. and, and other folks from anywhere. Yeah. You're able to communicate with family and friends through Zoom. And, and it's not ideal, and, and I know that. Right. It's definitely not ideal. Um, I have friends who are stuck outside of our country right now. Yeah. And their daughter is here pregnant and about to give birth oh, and I know like that is so hard because you want to be here I mean grandma grandpa want to be here right and that's difficult weddings are difficult right now although for our province that's now about to change as we start yeah. looking at different phases which is good but we still have to be careful we still have to be socially distant we need to wear masks when we can't be socially distant and that's not easy for a bride and groom yes that is true that is very true. Funerals are difficult. Yeah. But I got to say, even funeral parlors have stepped up to the plate and mm -hmm. said, okay, we need to step up. Just like churches, like these services have realized that, okay, we need to be accessible during this difficult time. Mm -hmm. And so they're setting up cameras in funeral parlors, which is really a difficult thing. There's, that's a tough thing. Because I've, we've always been of the, you know, here in the Western world anyways, it's very taboo to take pictures at a funeral and, and take video at a funeral. Like, that's not something that we would do. Yeah. But, but it's, a, it's a different um, scenario right now. Yes, and it things is. that were not acceptable are acceptable for the time being. For you that know? reason. Yeah. Because, like, family and friends need to be there. Yep. It's true. Yeah. And, and it's going to be interesting to see when all of this is done and kind of the dust settles, how our world adapts to 
the changes that have been put in place right now for tech, mm -hmm. like the amount of people that are now working from home. Absolutely. That, that before they would say, hey, can I work from home? And the boss is going, we don't allow that. There's no way to do it. Yeah. COVID happens and suddenly companies are going, we're going to find a way to make this happen. And now companies are realizing that maybe there's an economical advantage yeah. in having folks work from home. Yeah. And now there's even a conversation of a shorter work day here in Canada or work week oh, yeah. here in Canada. They're talking about going to a four day work week. Really? You know, just for these. I haven't heard that. Yeah, it's it's been a topic, a topic of conversation for many years, but it's yeah. really picked up because people are going, look, shorten the work week, and that way people have more time outside of the office. You can get you know longer days, but yeah, you know, you still get the same amount of hours, but it's fewer days in the week. You get more productivity. Get in, get out, and that way there's less exposure. You know, that's an interesting. You mentioned productivity, and and I've thought about that how like I I own this studio for example, mm -hmm. and and so to be able to work not from home, but for me to be able to work from the studio, I can be more productive. That's right. Yeah. There's less distractions. There's less, um, I would even go so far as to say fear yeah, that's in, right. in a lot of cases. And then maybe you're relating to that and maybe you're not, but, but there is that when, when you've got a, an office where people are coming and going and bringing product and, and yep. things like that. So, but um, one of the other interesting things is the, the shortages that we've seen are a little unexpected. So yeah. things like, here's an interesting one, plexiglass. So well, you think about all the stores yeah. that are putting up plexiglass dividers, which yeah. absolutely makes sense as a safety precaution. And, and maybe not so much even for the customers, but definitely for the staff. Yes. I mean, my stepmother works at a liquor store. Okay. And so she's interacting with hundreds of people per day. Mm -hmm. They line up. <laughs> you know it's yes, true. Yes, they do. And, and so to protect her, who I would say is, you know, at, at her age, would be a vulnerable person. And, and so I like that there's plexiglass dividing her from those hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. And whether or not it's a risk here in Canada, like... That's neither here nor there. It's like there are certain things that need to be in place just to play it safe. I'm, I'm more of the mindset to just play it safe, even though maybe I'm not vulnerable or maybe, you know, like that's, that's neither here nor there to me. Right. I'd rather just, hey, let's err on the side of caution. Yeah. That's my thing. Yeah. But with the shortage of plexiglass because of this, raspberry pie cases become... Right. Short supply. Yeah. Because there's not enough plexiglass for the manufacturers the yeah. to create these plexi cases. Well, now that we've got a surplus of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Some households do. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, you know, you, you talk about plexiglass, but as it relates to Raspberry Pi, but it yeah. is interesting. Uh, one of the things that I have noticed since, you know, you lack the ability, I, I say you as in people in general, but for me, yeah. I can't get into a lot of tech stores right now. Um, mm. Like we've got, um, a, you know, you know, you got your big box stores as far as for tech where you walk in, you can buy a computer off the shelf. But if yeah. you go into any of your, your computer stores where you need to customize a computer, oh. I can't get in any of them right now because they don't want people browsing mm. the shelves and touching. That's so tough, you have yeah. to go to the door and purchase. And, and the for me, store is the same. well, yeah, <laughs> but I need to build a computer right now. Oh, and with Amazon, it's where it's at. Well, it's like new egg is where it's at. Well, you that's the thing. So I can get some of the parts, but not all of them because there's the shipping delays going across borders and stuff, oh, but it's the people interaction that I'm realizing I think I know what I want for building a computer, but I want to walk in and go, these are the components I'm thinking of. Is this the way to go about it? Or do I need something else yeah. and have somebody go, Oh, hold on. That's not, you got to be aware of this. Yeah. And then this, and I go, Oh, that makes sense. I can't do that now. So now I'm gun shy to, you know, to, right. Those kinds to, of to browsers in are, and, 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 are difficult. Yeah. Cause it's like, if I buy this and I buy this and I buy this, is it going to work? Yeah. And so I'm afraid to click the mouse and, commit yeah. even though like if it's with amazon i could still kick sure. kick it back and go I, I bought the wrong thing but it's like i miss That's, that interaction so that makes yeah. it tough as well and and like thinking about that how like going into stores where you have to browse <gasps> bookstores yes i we ran into this scenario where my wife and kids are out of books 
Uh, my wife is an avid reader. Our library in town opens up on Friday. But it's been closed Forever. through the entire pandemic. Yes. Yeah. So she's that's not an e-reader person, is she? No. no. See, I see, love my e-readers. E-reader. So now, see, see what, you, what you're saying is that technology now makes a lot of sense. Oh, absolutely. Because you can get into Kindle or Kobo and just click on the book that you want, read the first few pages and see if you want it or not, and then buy it. That's right. And read it on your waterproof Kindle. Yes. Like that is, all of a sudden that makes sense. Uh, I bought but, an e-reader for my birthday last year. I'm so glad I've got it now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you love it? I love it. I am very much a tactile person, and you know this from from my video game, uh, like the video games that yeah. I enjoy. I'm very nostalgic, yes. and books, physical books, the smell of books, the feel, the tactile nature of books is very important to me. Yeah, yep. But I can really understand the the need for e-readers right now. It just makes sense. Absolutely. But yeah. uh, so I took my wife to a used bookstore, and this is the scenario where like you're in a bookstore where you're reading jackets on used books mm -hmm. and and they were open this was wonderful but they had to limit how many people were there we had to wear face masks and and we had to socially distance ourselves as best as we could in a small you know how used bookstores are right yes. so yeah. but we walked out with a stack of books so she oh, said so it's fantastic but so it's just a different time and I think, you know, we all have to be patient. We all have to be understanding and, and remember that the staff are going through the same thing and probably worse. Yes. Like the staff are probably more stressed out because they're dealing with the people who are given a hard time over having to wear a mask. Yeah. And I say this because here in Can well, in Ontario, anyways, there's now a mandate, a bylaw that says that we have to wear a mask yes. when we walk yeah. into a store. Yeah, pretty much all the health so, units have decreed. It. Yeah, uh, here in Barrie, it's yeah. it's necessary. So I actually, as of t uh, Friday, I have to put a sign in our window that says you're not allowed to enter without a mask. Right. Whether you agree with that or not. Again, I refer back to my comment. I'd rather err on the side of caution. Yes. It's a very small inconvenience. Well, exactly. And Somebody it's... said, like, if they're right, I've saved lives. If they're wrong, I've been mildly inconvenienced. And that's kind of, I think it's that's a, a but it's a fair perspective enough that, uh, that I can say, okay, you know what? Whether I agree or not, I'll, I'll wear a mask when I walk into the store. Yeah. Plain and simple. I'm not going to put up a fuss. No. So no, it's not worth it. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know how we got on that, Jeff. Uh, it's just, I, I think I it's don't... important to acknowledge the situation that we're all in. And, and today, this week, as we produce this show, it's a perfect example of this. Like, yeah. we actually canceled the live broadcast and, and Jeff and I decided that we would still get together and produce a show. That's right, yeah. But not live because we couldn't do it because of all the things that went on in our world this week that in our world, I don't mean our world as in it affected Earth. you as well, but <laughs> here in our town and, and in my day job and in the things that have gone on this week made it impossible. Right. So here well, we are. And, and with that, I mean, given the, the delays that we have through shipping because of border yep. crossing and making sure that stuff's been quarantined and all that kind of stuff, oh, yeah. it's even limited as far as show topics, access that you have to any sort of products. Like if you want to do a Inside, product review, oh, yes. it makes it tough. Because... My pine time is who knows where. Yeah. Um, I was in communication with their shipping department and trying to figure out where is my pine time. And they said, well, we don't actually know because the tracking number expires yeah. af after two months. So two months plus into waiting for my pine time to arrive, I can no longer track it. Yeah. And this is like, so now we're two months plus three weeks. That's wild. So. Well, I, I know our anniversary is coming up. Like my wife and I is oh, coming up. It's, so not you in and I. In, no, in uh -huh. September. I was kind of. And, and be, because oh, wow. Of, you keep track of that, Jeff? That's no, so sweet. No, I don't. Oh, man. Um, I'd hug him if it wasn't like for the <laughs> socially distant studio. But because of because of the long shipping times, mm -hmm. I actually purchased our anniversary gift for her weeks ago, wow. just to make sure that it arrived by the fall. Because how many of know. you actually sort Amazon by Prime now? 
all, all yeah. <laughs> yep. That's all I do. Yes. I won't even order anything if it's not Prime. So, hey, if you're selling stuff on Amazon, keep that in mind. Yes. Well, I've got a buddy who does, because Amazon has the delivery hubs in, t um, in the various areas. It's a saga. It's yeah. just like an hour away from us. Well, the... the How it takes two days. <laughs> Fair enough. But the, the, the company that does the shipping here in Barrie... Um, like my buddy who delivers, he's like, it's busier right now. Oh, sure. Because of all the online purchases yeah. of people making, cause they're sitting at home than black Friday, then, uh, boxing day. Like yeah. none of them have compared to the COVID purchasing. Well, it absolutely makes sense. I don't want to go into a store well, and stand in line for three hours and then finally get in and feel pressured to hurry up yes. because other people are waiting to get into the store. It's tough. Yep. And, and so I, I'm guilty of that. It's like, it's been a real blessing to be able to get on to Amazon and use mm -hmm. Prime to get the cereal that the kids eat. Yeah, exactly. And now they've got this subscribe feature, which is brilliant, but yet like tragic for every other person selling product in the world. But by subscribing, you save 15% on your product. Yes. Yeah. And then it delivers on what, like a monthly rotation or? Uh, you said it. Oh. One to six months. So things like deodorant, I don't, oh. ha I don't have to go to the store anymore. I just, it just shows up. You, you can't smell that. I, I, I can't smell, like smell flowers. It and I'm not getting any closer. I smell, smell like flowers. It's brilliant. I'll take, I'll take your word and on I that. And I save 15 points. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it, it is what it is. Uh, so, but, so yeah, but that's the world we're at, we've entered now. It is. And we're because there. of all these things, this is why we're having these, you know, crew conversations. Like last week I was finally able to come in. It's like, okay, how do we do the show now? We're going to talk about that for a minute because I feel like Jeff is hungry. I, I am hungry. But before we do, I want to give <laughs> shout out and kudos to our supporters. Now, of course, we had a recent Kickstarter campaign that got us into this studio yes. and we're still figuring it out. Yeah. This is only our second week where it's not just me. Yeah. Right. So this week we're trying something different. We're just trying a center cam. Last week was pretty brutal with three cameras. How much production all... time was that for you? Well, it took four days to produce. And, and so, you know, like this is my part-time gig. Yeah. So that, that's tough. Yeah. So, so this week we're doing the center shot and we're working with that. I've got ISO recording. It's 4K so I can work with it, yeah. but it, it is what it is. So we're learning how this space functions. We're getting, like we had a, uh, a, a designer in here on Monday. We've nice. got a contractor here on Friday for the first time. He has seen the place. But he hasn't done any work in here right. yet. So that's that's coming on Friday, too. So things are going to be changing around here and getting a little bit more professional. Good. But that, that's all good. But I want to say thanks to those who have supported the move yes. to this studio and our ongoing expenses as well. So those of you who choose to support us on Patreon, hey, that helps so much. I'm like getting caught up with like our Internet stuff. We moved in here during like the peak of COVID-19 shutdown. Yeah. So it was happening. like our internet service provider came in and installed everything yeah. and didn't give me anything. So they installed it, but they didn't give me anything. I don't know my account number. I don't know how to pay. What? I don't have an invoice. They don't have my shipping address to send me an invoice. There's nothing. So <laughs> Like, this is how weird this world is right now. So, like, yeah, they installed it. We had internet, but I couldn't, I didn't know how to pay. Wow. At all. I had no phone number to call. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wild. So, finally, they called my cell phone. <laughs> and so I chatted with them. I'm like, and they're like, yeah, we all, like, they were totally, like, yeah, we understand, like, this is, <laughs> this is the new now. Three months in, we haven't paid an internet bill. And they're like, here's how you pay. And they actually walked me through setting up an account and they created the account and they were good about it. But it's like, that's mental. Yeah. Like, so like even they are feeling it, but they got wow. us up and running. Well, good on them. Yeah. So we're, like, I'm here trying to get things figured out. Yes. It's tough, but we're, we're figuring it out. But, but those monthly expenses... They build up if you don't pay them for three months. Yeah. They also, you know, it's incurred on a monthly basis. And so Patreon really, really helps with that. So I want to say thanks to our patrons mm -hmm. because, you know, you are under mentioned. And there, you know, certainly, um, you know, you get some perks 
for being a patron at patreon.com slash category five. There's like behind the scenes and everything else. And especially now as the contractor is going to be coming in, hey, if you're a fan of the show, you want to become a patron because you're going to get to see how everything comes together. That's exciting. Yeah. But I also want to give shout out to the people who specifically funded the move. Yes. To get in here so that when the ISP finally calls my cell phone and says, hey, here's how you pay. You owe us for three months service. <laughs> That's but the funds are there. Oh. Yeah, the funds are there. And those folks really took a huge burden off my shoulders, Jeff. Like, you know, like this could have gone all sorts of awry. Oh, sure. Well, and they, they knocked it out of the park. I mean, we had a goal and I think we were over double. And in three hours. Yeah, wow. it was it was amazing. So to our Kickstarter backers, thank you. I can't mention you all by name, but I will say thank you to BP9, Scott Barkley, Ron Morissette, Jerry Kowalski, Jonathan Garby, Jens Nissen, Ameridroid, Noman5, Bill Marshall, NICAD, and again, everyone who supported the show through the move mm -hmm. and who continues to support us throughout uh, our, our broadcast as well. Yes. It just means so much. And, and we are viewer supported. We're a business, but... And I said this on the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, we're a business, but we give away our product for free. Right, exactly. How do you monetize that? I mean, there's the obvious stuff like, hey, there are ads on YouTube and we show you products and hopefully you buy them through our Amazon affiliate links and things like that. Mm -hmm. But really, it comes down to viewers who say, hey, I really enjoy this show and I want to support it and I want to donate to it. And yeah. that... That's where, like, that's how we're able to grow. That's how we're able to know. Patreon is great because it sets us up every month with, a, like, a target. Yep. We can kind of see how much money we're going to have at the end of the month. Which so we know, yeah, so we know we can cover the bills. So uh, thank you so much, everybody. Now, because of that Kickstarter, I, I do believe there are two things that we need to fulfill. And... And we've got a schedule. You are going down, buddy. We need to schedule the day that I get pummeled. Yes. With paintballs. And there are folks who are going to be receiving one-on-one uh, -on -one videos with, from me. There oh, are folks excellent. who are going to be able to chat one-on-one -on -one with Sasha Rickman. That's exciting. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of perks to being a, a part of our supporting community. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking forward to paintball day. Oh, man, I am. That's that's. 500 paintballs in like just if oh! if it's true the majority rules jeff uh you are overruled because you are one person not looking forward to that day and every <laughs> every every single person in our community is looking forward to shooting you with 500 paintballs uh yeah and hooking you up to a tens machine yes and putting you through labor simulated labor yeah my wife's really looking forward to that one. oh yes i get messages from her that are just yeah, pretty much. It's yeah. just a picture of her going. She's already told me that for that <laughs> day, she's coming with baking and she's just going to sit back and oh, relax and enjoy it. Oh, she's like, I've done it three times. This is your one time. So, so I need to ask her, what was your longest labor, Jen? Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're going to take the longest labor and double it. <laughs> oh boy i think it was like 12 hours all right so we had last week so 12 hours of pain for you jeff yeah. at least that 24 jen what do you say <laughs> i'm busy that day <laughs> <laughs> who's in charge um we had our our first ever category five crew conversations yes. last week yeah. and this week it's time for our first ever category five crew conversations cupcake So who do you think did the best with our crew conversations? Let me just remind you, if you're just joining us, Jeff, you covered topics like Chromebooks for school. Yes. For the education sector. Yes. For your children. Yes. You covered Raspberry Pi microcomputers as Minecraft servers. Yes. I, on the other hand, the clear winner... <laughs> covered uh, using 3D printers to save money. 
yep. because the price of 3D printers has come down so far. I posed the question, could I actually save money to, to spend it on a 3D printer? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is yes. I think it is too. I also talked about using a pan tilt uh, head from a DMX light, yes. which is a, a, like a, think of a DJ light that, you know, moves around and, and, and the DJ can control that with a DMX controller, mm -hmm. which is um, like pretty typical. And we have one here. And putting a Raspberry Pi HQ camera in the body of that and using the 3D printer to reprint the face I, to make it work. I, so you can still use the lights, but you've got the camera. When we went through this, I was like, there is, oh, there is no man. way that I'm coming out ahead because those are flipping cool ideas. Flipping cool. You heard it flipping right here, cool. Folks. Wow. I covered some crazy awesome stuff. But you Jeff, did. you're... Your mum was watching. <laughs> uh, I may have paid her. Uh, what, did I pull out the win? Tell me honestly, did you vote for your own videos? No. No. I All did right. not vote for my own videos. I also did not vote for my own videos. Jeff came out on top 25%. Yeah. Now, I think... Your, your topic of using a, a Raspberry Pi as a Minecraft server really tipped you over the edge because people seem to really love that. We got some comments. Yes. People talking about I think about that one was, was the most voted for video compared and to they, all four. And they loved it. Like yeah. the, people were talking about how, oh, this is something that I've been thinking about. Yes. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for talking about this. Yeah. I, I, <sighs> I have worked on it some more and I do have an update based on our conversation. Oh. Oh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. I, I've already kind of announced who gets the cupcake, but tell yeah. us. Yeah. So I, I did get the server up and running. <gasps> and for a single user to log in, it was not bad. Okay. As soon as my kids joined, not mm -hmm. so good. Oh. Yeah. I, uh, we had three Burn. computers, so I got the, the, the logins activated, and it just... Oh. So I would not use the 3B+. Plus. Okay. Here so is now I've got it on an Odroid. Huh? I'm going the next step up. Odroid XU4. XU4. With two gigs of RAM. With two with gigs. With EMMC or using SD? I'm using EMMC. <gasps> I've got a 64 gig EMMC on there. Beautiful. Which is way more than I need for the server. Mm, you say that, but then your kids become master builders. Well, exactly. And that's why I went with a bigger one. I debated on the 128, but I'm like, I think that's a bit overkill right now for a Minecraft <laughs> server. But I, so the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus was too slow going beyond multiple, uh, a single user. And I yeah. think even if it was um, speedy enough to run multiple users, by the time they start creating and building and all that, it would slow right down. So now I'm trying it on the XU4. Like I said, world gen. Yep, Brutal exactly. on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, I, you don't have an update for us yet? No. <gasps> Darn it, Jeff! What a tease! I can only what do so much. I can only oh do so much. Oh my gosh, dude. So I've got it installed, I just haven't done the, the test yet. You're going to fill us in on this? Yes, of course. Oh, goodness. And, and if, if the XU4... Uh, is a little bit slow, then I will go with the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay. Here is what is nice about going with the Raspberry Pi 4. You've already created it for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Correct. So all you have to do is take the SD card out of the 3B+, Plus, pop it in a Raspberry Pi 4, That's right. and turn it on. That's right. Because it's already that configured. That is beautiful. Yes. That's what Raspberry Pi has going for it, is that it is forward compatible. It's not backward compatible. If it, like you have to, well, not backward compatible. No, that's not right. Uh, what I mean is that um, an old distro from a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus will not work on a new Raspberry Pi 4 because they changed the bootloader. Yes. However, as long as you do like an, well, I presume it's a new version of Raspberry Pi OS. Yes. Yeah, it was the so most recent. Good. So it's going to work on a Raspberry yeah. Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 0, whatever. Um, but the performance will be impacted. If you have a distro that's been built on a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus that's not compatible with a Raspberry Pi 4, you can do a dist upgrade. Exactly. And that will actually make it compatible with it's a Raspberry really Pi 4. really easy to do. Yeah. Apt, update, and then enter. And then apt, upgrade, and then enter. 
and then apt dist dash upgrade. And that's all you need to do on a Raspberry Pi 3 or 0 yep. and anything in between in order to make it compatible with a Raspberry Pi 4. So you can take that SD card and move it into another, into yes. a faster system. You yep. cannot take that SD card out of the Raspberry Pi 3 and plug it into an XU4 from That's Odroid right. because they are not compatible. That's right. Yeah. But the Odroid has twice as much RAM, mm -hmm. way more storage, and oh, the MMC is so much faster than yes. SD cards, yes. especially on the pre Pi 4. Because those were really slow SD card readers. And the reason I went with if I what if I had a Raspberry Pi four, yeah. I would have used, I just would have gone from the three to the four. But okay. because I have not purchased a Raspberry Pi four yet, mm -hmm. the XU four is what I had, and so that's why I'm giving it a run on that. Wonderful. But I, as I was doing it, I think I thought about our conversation last week. You're like, oh, what about the Odroid? And what about the, you know? And so I'm like, here, here's the progression. Worth the shot. Worth so the shot. we can, you know, I'll be able to report back and say. This was the difference. Now, I, I should have thought to do like benchmarks and stuff between the two. But yeah, but you know, no, exactly. I mean, you can tell when you're playing Minecraft if world gen is bad. Yes. Yeah. So, so Jeff, on that note, enjoy your gourmet cupcake. Oh, I will. From our local bakery. I will. And while Jeff does that, I'm actually going to mosey on over to the bridge and I want to show you my new clock. Interesting. See ya. Two seconds later. All right, so while you enjoy that, I'm just going to work my way over to the bridge. And from here, what I wanted to show you is simply a, a clock that I've been working on. I know that sounds crazy, but one of the things that I've been trying to achieve with this space, which is our basically our producer's room, is to make it as functional as possible, but also try to give it some eye candy as well. I've been using just a standard analog clock on the wall because it has tick, 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 tick and I can count the seconds, but I wanted to take it one more, uh, like a, a step further, because quite often when we're producing video, especially live, we have to meet markers. So there's a countdown. Um, usually I have a walkie talkie if I'm producing somebody in the other room and I'll be communicating back and forth in order to let them know the countdown. So you've seen it on TV, I'm sure. So, you know, five seconds, three, mark, you know, so we're, we're punching in that way. But it's not always ideal to use just a standard clock. So I set out to build something a little bit different and it's powered by, today anyways, a Raspberry Pi 3B+. I am not at all satisfied with the performance of that, which you're about to see. Um, however, it's given me a development platform to play around with. Now I may have to install it on something that can handle better graphics. Well, why do you need graphics for a clock, Robbie? Because I want to. So this is what I'm working on. I based this on the Ares jQuery um, dashboard. So you may be familiar with that, but what I've done is I've actually created a functional clock out of this system. So, um, so I've taken that, it's basically a template, and then I've created a jQuery uh, clock, counter, countdown, um, disk check that uses Ajax to PHP to be able to check my network to see if there's any hard drive failures or, or, or hard drives that are full uh, in our array. Um, and I'll show you also, it, it even shows when we're live on the air. So that's pretty cool. Right now it's not connected. So we've got Studio E up here. These are the only things that are not functional. These are just eye candy right now um, from the original theme. I've left them in just to make it so that there's some filled space there. No point in removing them and having, having it not look symmetrical. So, um, so with this, we can ignore those things. Here we have the actual functional clock, and I've got Greek for time there, according to Google Translate. <laughs> so we've got 946 is the time, and we've got a seconds counter here. 10, 11, 12. So you can see how janky the video is. That's because of the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus not being 
Uh, it's the graphics processing, not being able to keep up with the with the visual effects that I've created. It runs stellar on my Linux desktop. Um, so that's the actual time. Nothing fancy there, except I wanted to separate out the seconds. Uh, rather than having them in line like you'd normally see, like 9 colon 46 colon 38, I wanted to move that 38 up here, and it's counting in real time using jQuery. So every second there's a timer that updates the time. Then, taking it one step further, quite often in production, we count backwards. So when we're looking at 10 o'clock the time, we're counting down to it. So we're calling 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 5, and then everything goes black, and boom, we're live. So that's how it works. So what we have is now, now we see that it's 9.47, we can really easily calculate that we've got 43 seconds left. But if we look down here, we actually have a countdown that says time will be 9.48 in 35, 34, 33. You can see that jQuery timer is a little bit off. That's also the Raspberry Pi. That's not, uh, that's not the system itself. It's that the Raspberry Pi unfortunately can't keep up with it. I was really thinking this was going to work on, on a single board computer. I tried it on an Asus um, Tinker board. And it was, uh, it was so unable to handle the graphics that it actually wouldn't even load them. Um, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus at least loads it, but not well enough. So I'm going to try a couple of different SBCs. Um, the reason I'm trying the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus right now is simply it has Wi-Fi, which makes it a little easier to set up because um, I don't have, I haven't unpacked my Ethernet cables yet. Over here, oh, and this is not functional either. This is just fake, um, part of the template. Oh, I should point out up here. So um, as I'm recording this, as we mentioned, we're not actually broadcasting live today. This is all we've produced this behind, like after the fact. So um, this shows the video feed is off the air. But as soon as we go live, this will actually shift to say on air. So that also serves a double purpose if we're here producing and, and broadcasting a live show. We'll notice that, uh, presumably, I mean, if we look up, we'll see that we're off the air, something's going on, even though we think we're on the air. Um, this will actually show that. Then this is also functional. So this shows disk usage. My disk usage is not actually that bad, although it is close. Um, what this is looking to do is it's going to connect to Samba shares on my server. And it does a disk check every 15 seconds to see um, how much disk usage there is. And this will move automatically. The only one right now that's currently connected, because I have not created those Samba connections, is the SD card. So you can see I'm using about what looks like about 10%, 8% of my SD card. So these will move in real time. The animation is so much better on a computer. So I've got this little box here that I'm thinking maybe I'll turn that into my clock, but part of the idea is I want to create a setup here that's very low power consumption, yet has some eye candy and is also functional. So this serves many purposes from the time to the countdown, um, to the disk usage warnings, and even showing us whether we're on air or off air. And it will even tell us if there's a problem with the API. If the API is not responding, this will go red and it will warn us of that. Right here you see an empty box, and that's because I have not yet plugged a microphone into the Raspberry Pi. This is a spectrum anal analyzer. Um, so that um, will actually show the, the spectrum uh, uh, in real time of audio that's flowing through the Raspberry Pi. So I'm thinking maybe we'll pull that off of our mixing console so that we can actually see the audio levels on the, uh, on the dashboard. Um, so that's pretty cool. So that's my new clock. It's much more than a clock. It's a functional dashboard and going to be growing over the next little while as I develop it. It's not really ready for mainstream use right yet. However, if you'd like to check it out, you'll see uh, a repository called Studio uh, on github.com slash cat5tv, my GitHub page. And the source code for this and everything is there and you can check it out. If you have a PR for me to make it even funkier, I'd love to see it. And I'm going to be working on figuring out which platform, which hardware platform is going to work the best. I don't really want to put it on a Pi 4. I figure it probably will run better there. Um, but that's a very expensive clock. Very expensive clock. So 
So maybe though, because there's dual video output on a Raspberry Pi 4, I could offset that cost by running my NEMS server on the fourth screen. So that gives me some thought. So maybe I'm going to tinker with that. What are your thoughts? What system should I run it on? What one do you think is going to perform best as far as the graphics go? The processor is doing just fine. It's able to do all this, but it's the graphical end of it that the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus just is terrible at. So uh, I'm curious what, what single board computer is going to be the best one for this use case. So check it out, github.com slash cat5tv slash studio. And the folder that you're looking for for this particular application is um, screens slash dashboard. And you'll also see screens slash the Orville, which is actually a screen from the set of the Orville provided by Tom Costantino. Um, so that repository is basically anything that we do, that I do for the studio, like API connections and things like that. That's where I stick them. So if you want to check out how we do things, that's a pretty cool spot. GitHub.com slash cat5tv slash studio. We've got to take a quick break, folks. Stick around. And we're back. That was good. Was that good? That was a good hit. Oh man, I'm so jealous. We're just gonna have to find a competition that you can win. I actually. <laughs> <laughs> After I know I've won, this is where I get cocky. <laughs> for those who are wondering, I did not buy a second cupcake for me to eat um, after the show or anything. That was that was literally the only one. So I, I, I hope I you enjoyed that, you jerk. I, I did. He did. He actually offered to split it, but I'm like, no, that's not socially distant, Jeff. And besides, you've already bitten into it. Well, so <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> So we, show, uh, we shoot this show every Wednesday. Yeah. And being the week that we've had, what a Wednesday oh my it has goodness. been. Yeah. Unbelievable. A few weeks back, Becca reported in the newsroom about how Samsung had bricked oh, I know. millions of their Blu-ray players. Unreal. They pushed out an update that bricked all of their Blu-ray players. Any so Blu-ray player that was connected to the web, which you buy, what do you, does anyone buy a Blu-ray player to play Blu-rays? Tell me honestly. No, we, no. You, they're smart. They have YouTube, they have Netflix, they got Amazon Prime Video, whatever else yeah. built in. And, and so that's, and, and the convenience of, yes, it can play Blu-ray and DVD and even music CDs. Mm -hmm. If people even buy those anymore. I do. Do you? I do. I'm I very nostalgic. You know that about me. I don't remember Jeff. the last time I bought a CD. I or, can't or buy Blue digital Rig. downloads. Yeah. I yeah. just can't do it. I can't do it. I'll do digital rentals of videos, but music, yeah. I need a physical CD. But that said, they bricked all of their Blu-ray players. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But it went to show that a big company can make a little mistake that can cause a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to brick a bunch of people's media players no. in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> Hello. Not. So at least I'll give them kudos. Samsung has stepped up to the plate and yep. said, this was our error. We will pay to fix it. Yep. Yep. If you contact your Samsung rep, they will actually give you a FedEx shipping label and they will fix it and they will return it to you entirely at their expense, even if it's out of warranty. Wow. Right? So they've done, they've done good. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine they haven't lost all profit from that $120 Blu-ray player that you've ever, that you purchased from Walmart. Right. Yeah. Um, but they, they done good. That's how a company should react when they screw up. I feel like this is a lead up to a company who screwed up. So back to our Wednesday. <laughs> Anybody want to look up Wednesday? What is today The as we're shooting this? Uh, it, the it is the 15th of July. The 15th of July, I feel like this was the COVID day for tech. Like, it just went nuts. This day was brutal. So I got to work, Jeff. 
Yeah. And my colleague who is working in support right now because we've got two people who are stranded because of closed airports due to COVID-19. Yep. And one person who is on vacation who can't actually travel but is still taking it easy for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So my technician is uber stressed out. What's going on? He says, well, we've got a big customer who is having trouble with their email. And I can't figure it out. I just can't get to the bottom of it. Uh, okay. And we talked about it for about 15 minutes and tried to, okay, we'll try this, try that, blah, blah, blah. No solution. Okay. But, and then I went and sat at my desk. Right. And then the phone started ringing. And the first call that I took was somebody whose outlook was crashing. And so that's pretty, you know, that, that, happens. that can happen, especially they've got roaming profiles. The guy has disconnected his laptop from the network and walked away before closing Outlook and dis basically disconnected his right. PST file. So now he's botched his email profile. Right. Okay. That happens. So I remoted in. I've got the manager of the company on the phone and, and I'm remoted in and, and I've recreated his profile in Outlook and, and I'm, I'm ready to resync all of his email. Open Outlook and it crashes. Really? What even after, do? even after update uh, creating a new profile, so then I say, okay, well, on to step two, go into add remove programs and uh, do a repair operation. So we'll do a quick one first, and that that works, but still open it and crashes. Okay. So okay, well, we'll do the full online repair for Microsoft Office, and that should do it because that basically rips it out and reinstalls it. Right. And uh, so I ran that, and that took forever, and it still crashes. Really? So I said to him, I said, look, my lead tech is on vacation this week, and so he's going to be back on Monday. Let me chat with him. I want to get his thoughts on this. I don't want to waste too much of your time. I'm on the clock. Mm -hmm. I'm billing for this time. And, uh, and we'll, we'll cir circle back on Monday after I've had a chat with him. Yep. Because that's not my department. I'm cybersecurity specialist. Yeah. So, so really, like I know what I'm doing, but I don't want to waste your time and I don't want to run up a bill if I'm not having success. Right. That makes sense. It's fair. I'm honest. <laughs> so we let him go off the phone and I moved on with my day and a call came in. Outlook is crashing. Different client? Different client. So this is now three clients Outlook issues. And I'm not talking little clients. I'm talking first client is 200 computers. I'm talking second client is maybe 180. Oh my goodness. Third client is smaller, 40 staff. Still, that's big. Yeah. Outlook All is of crashing. them are having Outlook issues. M many of them are. Okay. Get this. The ones who opened Outlook this morning... They're not having any problems. The ones who opened it this afternoon, it crashes immediately. So I started. We started this discussion talking about Samsung and how they pushed out an update, and it's it's a, a mind bending open uh, mind opener that a company like Samsung could push out an update that would destroy all of their DVD players and Blu-ray right. players. But now. As it turns out, through investigating, and, and so obviously at this point, I'm like, okay, something is weird here. So I start looking at forums, and I start looking at various sites and, and doing some searches. This is before it started trending, folks. Microsoft pushed out an update for Microsoft Office that basically bricked Microsoft Outlook. A, on the fly. A midday yeah. update? Mm-hmm. Why? So people who so here we are in the middle of a business day, yeah. a Wednesday, in a week where people have been told by our governments, okay, be socially distant, but you can reopen your office now. Yeah. So now they're 40 staff, they're 180 staff, they're 200 plus staff are access. trying to access their email. And what's happening? Outlook immediately crashes. So it turns out it was Microsoft pushed out an update, basically bricking Microsoft Outlook. See, I'm so glad I don't use Microsoft Outlook. 
<laughs> so says our Linux using community. People, people are saying in our exactly. chat, well, who uses Microsoft Outlook? Not me. Right. Yeah. Um, so has it been resolved? Well, The Verge uh, is reporting, and Marshman has been so kind as to uh, send this to me over Discord. Uh, the Verge is reporting that Microsoft has rolled out an Outlook desktop crash fix. Uh, Microsoft Outlook email apps for Windows started crashing at launch for a number of users, everybody, <laughs> in the around the world today. Like this, So this became a trending topic on Twitter. Yes. And so... Um, this oh, is a talk about Twitter. global issue. We will. Oh. This was a global issue. This doesn't matter. Like Office 365 users using Pop, using Zimbra, using whatever you're using. If you've got your right. own Exchange server, well, it was affecting everyone. So, so it this looks was like the, they this was the software on the computer. Like if you logged into the web portal, you could still access your. Oh computer. yeah, OWA okay. was still up. Yeah. Okay. And all those things were up. It was people who have it on their computer. So here's okay. the problem, Jeff. What happens when Outlook starts crashing? People think it's their computer. And who do they call? Tech support. Tech support. And tech support pushes the magic button that starts billing them. Question. Did you start with, did you turn it off and on again? No. Oh. Because Microsoft Outlook profile corruption is a common thing. Yeah, that's true. So you recreate the profile, you start over, and you resync the email. You repair, install, if Outlook is still non-functional. Right. And so on. But I went through those steps and it didn't help. So as it turns out, this update, so what I ended up doing is I ended up going in and, and manually uninstalling the update that came in. Okay. And instead installed an update from June. So basically reverted to the previous updated version of Microsoft Outlook. Right. And then it so that's, that's how I was able to fix these customers' computers. So my day was toast. Yeah. My coworker, his day was toast. We were just fielding call after call after call. And I said on Twitter, who is responsible for the lawsuit that, oh, yeah. is, going, that is going, like, I'm talking like a, a grand scale lawsuit where, why are my customers, this is where it's hard to be honest, folks. Why are my customers having to pay my hourly rate yep. to fix Microsoft screwing up their computers. Yep. I totally Samsung agree. took the fall. Samsung gave everybody free repair service. They're paying the shipping both ways and they're getting it fixed. What the heck is Microsoft doing in this situation? Nothing. They won't even say much about it. Oh, we fixed oh, it. No. That'll be it. That's all they're saying. The Verge says, hey, that problem with Microsoft Outlook that took everybody's Outlook offline earlier today, they've fixed it. Hooray! They've issued a patch. What about all the customers who had to pay mm -hmm. me and their technicians, not my customers, other, cust other people, yeah. who had to ha have their IT staff redo the updates on 200 computers? Oh, see, that's wild. Think about that. Samsung's got it right. Microsoft yep. is dead to me. Th I that's think that just been for a while. <laughs> I'm sorry to rant. Wow. But that, and, and that just makes me upset. I am an honest technician. I'm an honest person. And I need to be paid for my time. Right, exactly. And the stuff that you had planned to do, you couldn't do, no, do because I, you're dealing with this. Yeah. Yeah, so now there's this backlog of everything. That's unfortunate. Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, post below. Let us know if you're watching this online. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, thank you to Marshman for sending us that article from The Verge. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, if you are impacted by this, note that a subsequent update fixes the broken update, which is the update process for Microsoft Windows. It's funny that we're talking about updates. I, I have had an update on my computer that's tried to install now for probably the last month yeah and my windows like because i have a dual boot windows linux yeah and every time i log into windows it's like oh there's an update can we can we run it i keep trying what? to like your windows asks for permission it does <laughs> that's mental so i keep trying so i give it permission How did you get that <laughs> and it goes oops sorry, sorry we can't, can't process this oh man so, so my windows won't update windows perfect
I'm like, this is so, amazing. <laughs> this don't is don't fix what ain't broke. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm at the point where I just ignore it. And I'm like, I'm just going to leave things the way they are. Yes. <laughs> Keep going, Linux. Uh, yeah, exactly. Use Linux. <sighs> you mentioned Twitter. Yes. Many. Oh, my goodness. So this, this is, as this is all going on with Microsoft, many Twitter accounts were compromised today, <sighs> being that we're shooting on a Wednesday. Is this, was, was today the single largest account compromisation on, on Twitter? In a, in a day, I don't recall. Well, I don't know the stats on that, Jack. I don't recall any other day like this where t where Twitter blew up. So the question becomes: Which staff member at Twitter got canned, <laughs> oh, so and they left their account open? Because here's the thing: today, so we're shooting on Wednesday. Yes, the fifteenth, you said of July. Fifteenth. I've July. lost all track. I've yeah. given up on time. <laughs> and in this one day, Apple. Their Twitter account. Elon Musk. <gasps> Bloomberg. What? Cash App. Yeah. Jeff Bezos. Maybe you've heard of him. I think, is that, is that the guy that runs that big company? Oh, yeah. I can't remember the Amazon. name. Amazon. Amazon. Oh, yeah. Amazon. Wow. Right. Heard of them. Bill Gates. Gates has it. What? Bill Gates. Uber. Tron. Justin Sun. Bitcoin. Bitcoin got hacked. Oh. Ah, oh, that one hurts. Not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin's Twitter account. Coinbase. Yeah, that's what I mean. Coinbase. And the list goes on and on. And then gets into political figures such as Joe Biden. <laughs> okay. And are you ready for this? Barack Obama. Ah, oh, Obama got it. Got act. So yes, some of you may be noticing a trend. However, here's the thing: the the particular hack posted on all of these accounts pretty much simultaneously, like within minutes of one another. Really, a pretty traditional cryptocurrency um, scam. So basically, huh. so Elon Musk's Twitter account said, "Send." I'm feeling generous. So for the next 30 minutes, send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and I will send you back $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. Bill Gates's Twitter account tweeted, send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and I will, tweet you, and I will send you back uh, $2,000 worth of Bitcoin. But here's the thing, Jeff. Bitcoin's Twitter said... Yes. Send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and I will send you $2,000 of Bitcoin. So do you see how we need to think about things before we automatically trust them? Well, I was, this was my thing. Like, if I saw that, my first thought would be, this isn't legit. Yes, however, Elon, we know banks cryptocurrency. Yes. Bitcoin, we know, has access to insurmountable <laughs> amount of Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. So why, why not? And then there are others who are saying, oh, click this link. We're going to uh, contribute to um, medical science through Bitcoin and so on and so forth. So there, this was a massive attack. Yeah. A massive attack. We don't currently, at least as, as of the time that we're shooting this, know who is responsible or, or some would say why, the question becomes why? Well, clearly they want Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but would anyone fall for it, Jeff? Would anyone? Well, unfortunately, yes. The interesting thing about Bitcoin is you can not track the transactions. However, right. you can see that the transactions occurred. That's right. And so when Bill Gates tweeted Send me $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, and I will send you $2,000 worth of Bitcoin back. Mm -hmm. In the first five minutes, oh, no. $50,000 oh. worth of Bitcoin oh. were sent to that Bitcoin address. In five minutes. Very difficult math here, $10,000 per minute. And you're not getting it back. Like, you no, can't recover that. You can't recover it. It can't be traced. You can't even prove it. 
because Bitcoin is secure, it's part of the cryptocurrency blockchain. Oh, that just hurts to hear. Yeah. So let's have a moment of silence for those who fell for this scam. But this really that was a down. really quick moment of silence. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a moment. Uh, of let's move you on. Know, so. Let's move on. You're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> you fell for it again, you fool. Oh, God. We've told on. you, we've warned you. None of our viewers fell for it, Jeff. I, you know what? If you did, please comment and let us know. And, and, and why? I sure hope not. Why would you click that? Why? Oh, dear. This, you know what? Can you just indulge me? Can we get a double face palm? Ugh. I can't help but smile, Jeff. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta look serious, but I can't help but smirk. Uh, and that was just Bill Gates again. What about the other accounts? Do we have stats on that yet? Or uh, There are stats. I mean, you can uh. look at the Bitcoin addresses that they posted. Now, last I checked, Twitter was privy to the fact that this was occurring. Right. And they said they were investigating. And in fact, they were locking down the ability for some accounts to tweet. Okay. So they're on top of it. Probably by the time this goes live, we're going to know more. But at the point of where we are right now, sitting in our studio recording, it's happening in real time right now. So here's the question that is running through my head. Mm. Is this a security breach on Twitter? Or is this a security breach on the devices that run those Twitter accounts? Because the fact that they were all fairly simultaneous within minutes of one another makes me wonder, was it an, uh, an attack in, in the Twitter mm -hmm. infrastructure? This is why I joke. What staff member at Twitter got fired? Uh, yeah. Right? But Who, if it wasn't, then it becomes a matter of... Well, the dark web. Well, yeah. But what's out there that what's for all, sale? all of these accounts... At the same time, it means that either there was a, 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 a some sort of smart entity that was logged into all of these at the same time and went, okay, go. Mm -hmm. uh, or was it a, you know, your typical email thing, you click the link and suddenly you're infected. Was it something like that where it just kind of went... That all of these... Yeah, is there a connection between... Verified them? folks fell for? Yeah. Phishing scams... Spear phishing scams are on the rise right now. And the so fact bad. is that during COVID-19, I mean, hey, you might be work from home, but so are the hackers. Is there the possibility, uh, again, this is just kind of starting to think outside the box, but could there be a relation to uh, like a, an unrelated service where there's some sort of uh, phishing program that's collecting information where all of them are using it? Um, like I know we covered in the news a couple of weeks ago about Discord, that there's bots on the rise. Uh, or could it be, like, I'm just trying to think of something, because I mean, a lot of those are tech-based. We can speculate, Jeff. We don't know. At least yeah. at the time of filming, yeah. we don't know. Yeah, there's absolutely a possibility of, like, I think spear phishing is a very real possibility. Mm -hmm. um, somebody wow. compromising phones and uh, who knows? Would, would 2FA fix this? I don't know, but here's what our crypto correspondent, Robert Koenig, says. Oh, yeah. And Go he ahead. posted this privately to us. Yes. And this may be what you're, what's kind of triggering this thought process for you. He posted this in our staff channel on our Discord and says... I haven't read it yet. He, well, here, here you go, Jeff, because this is going to be deja vu when you go home later and you read this. Okay, fair enough. Robert Koenig is our crypto correspondent from the newsroom, and he says, uh, from... from uh, uh, the crypto corner says those scams are really clever. Okay. Absolutely. They even know how to place ads on YouTube. What? And that's true and scary because yeah, I I've seen it where wow. some malicious ads trick people into clicking and providing their details. Wow. Um, okay. So here's the thing that Robert, stresses. He says on GitHub, on YouTube, Twitter, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication is an absolute must these days. Okay. However, he warns, do not rely on your cell phone because... As in like the number or the device? The phone number. 
So SM, okay. SMS as 2FA. Don't, oh, okay. Don't rely on your SMS as 2FA because your phone number can be hacked quite easily. Oh, yes. A SIM swap can occur quite easily. Yep. And that's some food for thought. Because mm. if you're relying on your phone's phone number, that can be hacked. That can be obtained and used by someone else. So for anybody who's watching that's going, I, I've just lost $1,000 in Bitcoin. I'm sorry for your loss. Hey, uh, you said that so straight face. That was, that was good. <laughs> uh, if, if they're going, okay, so I don't want to use my cell phone number for two-factor authentication. What other options are available for them for 2FA? The Google Authenticator app. I mean, there's other yeah. authenticator apps. There are tokens that you can purchase. Okay. Uh, you can get them off Amazon. I mean, you can get uh, physical hardware keys yeah. that have a, a token that yeah, that do um, look for things like single-use passwords. And, and it, it's easy enough. I mean, Google Authenticator works pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you just don't want to, uh, you don't want to lose your phone. Because that causes a problem Yes. if you lose your... You can use your phone as the authentication device, but Robert is very specific in his phrasing when he says, don't use your phone number right. as the 2FA. Right. And that absolutely makes sense. Hmm. Absolutely. Google Authenticator, on the other hand, and I say that because that's a, a very common one. There are other authenticator apps or single-use password, one-time password, OTP apps available. Um, but they generate a password and they refresh every 15 seconds or something like that. So it, it makes sure that that one-time password is only available for 15 seconds. Yeah. So if you don't have your phone, you're not getting in. Yeah. And you really do need multi-factor authentication on every service these days. Oh, period. Oh, absolutely. Period. Yep. And it really does. It's not the perfect solution. It's not, you don't be complacent, but realize that if you don't have 2FA, you are in a very risky situation mm. these days. Wow. I was a part of a Kingston tweet up, tweet up, I guess they call it, the other day about encryption, 2FA, those kinds of things. And, and one of my comments was, like, if you had a device that had a bunch of data on it and you left it on your car seat and someone stole it, would, one, would you lose any of the data? And two, would they gain access to that data? And the answer to both of those questions should be no. Correct. And that encryption should be authentication enabled. You should have 2FA in order to be able to access the data. So even if they figure out the decryption, they don't have your phone. They don't have your authenticator app. Right. So they can't gain access to that data. That's very, very important these days, folks. Yes. I can't stress that enough. Wild. Yeah. Wow. Time flies, Jeff. Especially when the world goes nuts over tech What issues. a week. What a week. <laughs> Day. <laughs> what a one day. day. This is just one day in the life of tech geeks, folks. Yes. So welcome to our world. I got to say, I wasn't impacted by any of this. <laughs> I, just, I was running uh, my Linux look machine. Look at poor Robbie. I was running this. my Linux machine at home. I didn't yeah. have any Windows Outlook bricks. Oh, it didn't, it didn't uh, happen. I'm, oh, I'm, Thunderbird was fine. I'm not a big enough <laughs> entity on Twitter to have to, you know, get my Twitter hacked. I just, you know, everybody leaves yeah. just the ginger beard alone. There you go. <laughs> We've got to head over to the newsroom. Here is Becca with your, your news stories for this week. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020 will launch on August 18th. Samsung expects 6G to launch as early as 2028. The average cost of charging an electronic vehicle in Canada is just $277 per year. Facebook and Sony are preparing to increase output of upcoming gaming devices. A vulnerability in Windows DNS server can allow hackers to run malicious code as admin on all computers on your network. And Lego and Nintendo are making a Lego NES. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. 
After a series of closed alpha tests, Microsoft's Xbox Game Studios and Asobo Studio announced Monday that the next-gen Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 will launch on August 18th. Pre-orders are now live, and the game will come in three editions. Standard for $60, Deluxe for $90, and Premium Deluxe for $120, with the more expensive versions featuring more planes and handcrafted international airports. The last part may come as a bit of a surprise, given that Microsoft and Asobo are using assets from Bing Maps and some AI magic on Azure to essentially recreate the Earth and all of its airports. Still, the team must have spent some extra time on making some of these larger airports especially realistic, and today, if you were to buy even one of these larger airports as an add-on for Flight Simulator X or X-Plane, you'd easily be spending $30 or more. The default edition features 20 planes and 30 hand-modeled airports, while the deluxe edition bumps that up to 25 planes and 35 airports, and the high-end version comes with 30 planes and 40 airports. All the airports are still available in the lesser versions, just without the extra detail. Based on what Asobo has shown in its regular updates so far, even the 20 planes in the standard edition have been modeled in far more detail than in previous versions, and maybe even beyond what some add-ons provide today. Because a lot of what Microsoft and Asobo are doing here involves using cloud technology to, for example, stream some of the more detailed scenery to your computer on demand, chances are we'll see regular content updates for these various editions as well, though the details here aren't yet clear. As Flight Simulator 2020 is about to enter its closed beta phase, we can expect to see more details in the coming weeks leading up to the release. While we're still waiting for the mainstream transition to 5G, Samsung is already beginning to discuss 6G, which the company expects to be commercialized as early as 2028. In a white paper published Tuesday, Samsung has said it expects the International Telecommunication Union to begin working on 6G in 2021. The amount of time and work dedicated to developing each generation of networking has shortened as time passes. Samsung said in the white paper that the company expects the earliest commercialized date for 6G to be 2028. It also states its belief that mass commercialization will or could occur by 2030. Samsung believes 6G will equally serve humans and machines as the main users. 6G will, be, will reign in an era of advanced services for truly immersive extended reality, high-fidelity mobile hologram, and digital replica. 6G's performance requirements much, must reach a peak data rate of 1,000 gigabits per second and air latency of fewer than 100 microseconds. For comparison's sake, that's 50 times the peak data rate of 5G and one-tenth the latency. The company has identified the three major pillars and requirements that will make up 6G in order to fully realize 6G performance, architectural, and trustworthiness requirements must be met. 5G was mainly focused around increased performance. Samsung's white paper notes that 6G architectural and performance requirements will overcome hurdles made by the limited computational capacities of mobile devices. Trustworthiness will address privacy and security concerns. Curious if an electric car will save you money on fuel costs? A report in Canada shows that the average cost to charge an electronic vehicle in Canada is just $277 Canadian per year, which is roughly 203 USD. U-Switch, who generated the report, looked at the average price per kilowatt hours in 50 different countries, the average mileage per driver, and the average miles electronics vehicles get on a full charge to determine this statistic. Using this method, Canada is one of the least expensive countries to own an electronic vehicle in, since the electricity is relatively cheap in some parts of the country. The most expensive countries are Denmark, Germany, and Belgium, but even in the worst case, we're talking amounts of around $800 per year for the average driver. The data shows how much money drivers can save by moving away from gas-powered cars. If it costs around $60 to fill up, and you need to do that roughly once a month, that means you're paying more for gas in four months than the average electric vehicle owner will pay in a year.
Welcome to the world of cryptos and welcome to the Crypto Corner. It has been a fantastic week again. Not of course if we look into the numbers like Bitcoin stayed around 9200 or Ethereum around 240. So no huge developments in this area here. But if we sort by seven days then we see that we had some coins that increased by over 100% like Elrond, uh, DIVI 60%. Over 20 coins increased more than 15%, and only four coins lost more than uh, 15%. Per, uh, percent. So a positive development uh, from that point of view in the market. And if we look, at, we compare, for example, the, the, the history of the big uh, uh, coins in the DeFi market, like Maker uh, or, or Kyber or ZeroX, uh, and compare it with the profit of Ethereum, then we'll see that Ethereum stayed more or less flat at 0%, so it lost minus 0.3%, uh, but all these others gained over 1,000%. So huge development that is happening under the hood in the crypto market. And so one has to be careful also at the same time on where to invest and how to invest because you might lose uh, a lot of money. One area that is the case is here. You, I don't know if you've seen those, but those are ads in uh, YouTube <clears throat> or even this is a live YouTube channel that is currently uh, transmitting. And uh, in here you see, hey, you can win uh, a lot of money if you just participate in, in this scam. They're all scams, so don't even think about putting some money into it. I can guarantee you, you will never see that money back. Yeah, and so... How they do that, nobody really knows, uh, but uh, you see them as advertisements and also as channels uh, promoting here. And as you can see, this one here, Mr. Kit Kit has got 339,000. It's all fake. Um, so they're masters in, in conning people. <clears throat> also, the famous pump and dumps. So where price goes up because some people are promoting it. In this case, TikTok, some kids started promoting Dogecoin, a coin that has got no purpose and the price went up by over 40-50% in one day. Next few days it came down again. So be careful with these things. Don't participate there. The moment you hear about some pump, uh, it'll, it'll be too late again because those that started that pump are already planning on how to uh, leave that one. Next is um, if we look into Compound and uh, if we want to borrow or lend some money, <clears throat> then there is some collateral factor in here. Yeah, so 60%. In other words, if I put in 100%, then I can take 60% out. So there's over and over collateralization in, in this industry. And that's how most of these uh, are staying uh, on a fairly low risk uh, basis. But there has been a new development. Aave is the first one that is starting now uh, with credit, uh, uh, credit delegations. So in other words, you can have a credit without even putting up some collateral. And the way they solve that is that you have to sign a contract with a per per person that gives you or whom you give the money uh, and it will be uh, sorted out in a, in a legal or regular court in case there is a default. So that's an interesting development I find. Now, <clears throat> another interesting development, but more on the negative side, or not negative, but one has to be careful, is Tether. Uh, as you remember, Tether has got... Um, uh, from the 24-hour volume, it's number two or usually number one. So you see it's very close to Bitcoin with 19 billion uh, being traded you know, in 24 hours. Most of that is between exchanges or coming from China because Chinese like to put the money into Tether to keep it there. But on the downside is they have been sued by the uh, New York Supreme Court because some money disappeared uh, between the company of Bitfinex and Tether and they both belong to the same company. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a bank that went bankrupt and uh, uh, $850 million disappeared. And so this uh, court wants to go into, into detail in regards to Tether. So that might be really bad news for Tether. So be careful also on your end with Tether. Now, the last three ones is what's going to happen coming week. The first one is here, Binance. Binance has got an exhibition that started today <laughs> with fairly good keynote speakers. As you can see, it's ongoing already. Um, there are a lot of Chinese people speaking in Chinese, which I find interesting. So it's a, there's a shift towards Chinese speakers. Um, and it's a good exhibition. And the other one is Asia uh, blockchain, always a huge one. 
and also very good speakers like Chris Hatfield or uh, Hester Pierce, uh, Adam Back, one of those big uh, Bitcoin gurus that we have. Um, um, Vitalik Buterin, just uh, for fun, uh, go subscribe to this here and listen to Vitalik. Uh, it's, if you understand something, uh, kudos to you. And the last one is the Singapore blockchain, uh, also with some very good speakers and very good headlines. Uh, interesting presentations that they're giving here, like Charles from uh, Cardano is going to do some presentations. He's always fantastic to listen to. Roger, a uh, very controversial person in the industry, uh, is also presenting. Um, well, uh, just subscribe to these. It's worth the experience and it's worth uh, just following what they're doing. Um, it's great uh, and they're usually free so yeah that's it from uh, from us this week so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something and I'm looking forward to see you uh, next week again so thank you very much for watching Facebook and Sony are preparing to increase output of upcoming gaming devices Facebook's Oculus, the global leading provider of virtual reality headsets by market share, is eyeing growth of at least 50% from a year ago for its latest version of head-mounted VR devices, pushing production to 2 million units. Meanwhile, Sony, the world's number two video game console maker after Nintendo by shipments, has also raised production orders for its upcoming PlayStation 5 to around 9 million units from the roughly 6 million units it had planned earlier this year. The PlayStation 5 is the first completely new generation of the console in seven years after Sony launched the PlayStation 4 in 2013 and an upgrade in 2016. Facebook's move further underlines the social networking giant's ambition to further expand its footprint in the emerging VR market, where it is the market leader with around 35% market share. Its first all-in-one VR gaming system, Oculus Quest, became a hit after it launched last May. Compared with the cyclical and relatively mature games console market, which is dominated by Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, market watchers said VR was still a nascent market where a lot of players are trying new applications. But gaming is still the most important segment. CounterPoint senior analyst Karin Chahan said, During the pandemic, the gaming industry witnessed a record number of online player additions as more consumers are considering gaming for entertainment at home. Facebook is looking to further expand standalone VR, which gives users a more immersive experience than PC and smartphone-based VR headsets. The U.S. company said in June it will stop selling Oculus Go, its entry-level VR device, which went on sale in 2018, to focus on the Oculus Quest and Rift offerings, its more powerful and high-end products. Oculus Rift S, introduced in 2019, still needs to be connected to a computer to function. Mark Zuckerberg said in an earnings conference earlier this year that the company's revenue categorized as others reached $297 million for the January-March quarter, up 80% from a year ago, which was driven pri uh, primarily by sales of Oculus products. The VR market is growing. HTC, formerly a leading smartphone maker, shifted its focus from headsets to VR, while Sony launched its first PlayStation VR in 2015. Google, Samsung Electronics, and Huawei Technologies all introduced phone-based VR headsets using smartphones as the VR headset screens. Apple has been working on augmented reality technology for years and has reportedly entered a trial production for an augmented reality device recently. The, sh the worldwide shipment of all types of VR devices last year was around 10 million units. Facebook, Sony, and HTC together accounted for 69% of the market. But excluding mobile VR, which requires a smartphone, the overall uh, VR market shipped around 4.32 million units, with Facebook shipping roughly 1.5 million devices. Microsoft is urgently advising Windows Server customers to patch a vulnerability that allows attackers to take control of entire networks with no user interaction and from there rapidly spread from computer to computer. The vulnerability, dubbed SIGRED by researchers at Checkpoint who discovered it, resides in Windows DNS, a component that automatically responds to requests to translate a domain into the IP address uh, computers need to locate it on the Internet. By sending maliciously formed queries, attackers can execute code that gains do domain administrator rights and then from there take control of the entire network. 
The vulnerability is present in all Windows Server versions from 2003 to 2019. Both Microsoft and the researchers said that it's wormable, meaning it can spread from computer to computer in a way that's akin to falling dominoes. With no user interaction required, computer worms have the potential to propagate rapidly just by virtue of being connected and without requiring end users to do anything at all. When a worm's underlying vulnerability easily allows malicious code to be executed, exploits can be especially harmful, as was the case with both the WannaCry and NotPetya attacks from 2016 that shut down networks worldwide and caused billions of dollars in damage. Checkpoint researchers said that the effort required to exploit SigRed was well within the means of skilled hackers. While there's no evidence that the vulnerability is actively under exploit at the moment, Checkpoint and said that's likely to change, and if it does, the destructive effects would be high. Microsoft rated the chances of exploitation as more likely. Many outside researchers concurred. Security researcher Marcus Hutchins fears attackers will exploit SigRed in an attempt to wage crippling ransomware campaigns. In that scenario, attackers would take control of a network's DNS server and then use it to push malware to all connected client computers. Microsoft issued a fix as part of this month's update Tuesday. Organizations that use Windows DNS should carefully assess the risks and install Tuesday's patch as soon as possible. The collaboration between LEGO and Nintendo will go beyond the LEGO Super Mario series of playsets uh, set to launch in August. LEGO is also making a brick-based version of the classic Nintendo Entertainment System. On Twitter, the official LEGO account posted a darkened video of an upcoming set with the words, Are you ready to play like never before? The five-second teaser shows what is clearly an NES system, a controller and a CRT television, which would logically be composed of plastic LEGO bricks. Can't quite see it? Here's what the video looks like after we brighten it up and resolve. The 2,646-piece LEGO Nintendo Entertainment System set will feature an elaborate build for the brick-based television. A crank on the side of the TV will make an on-screen Mario jump up and down and make the on-screen play field scroll right to left. The set also appears to work with the LEGO Super Mario sets. Clear photos of the LEGO NES were also leaked, showing the 8-bit console with its controller, a Super Mario Bros. cartridge, and a vintage tube television. And on Tuesday, Nintendo posted a video to their YouTube channel which shows the set being built. It'll be pricey, listed at 300 euros. LEGO and Nintendo have not officially announced a release date for the LEGO NES set as of yet, but we expect the announcement soon. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thank you so much for being here with us this week, everybody. It's been fantastic having you here. It's uh, we're, we're never sure what's going to happen, and this week has been with everything that happened this week. Wow. Just unbelievable. And, and we only scratched the surface of a Wednesday in mm -hmm. the life of a tech geek. I didn't talk about all the other things that I had to deal with today, Jeff. I I'm sure but there was a lot. It was quite the the week quite the day but nice to have you here and and great that we could still produce a show and, yes. and be here with you and i appreciate you being here with us so very much i'll remind you to please follow us on twitter at category 5 tv i'm personally on twitter at robbie ferguson as well and i follow back and don't forget our website is category 5.tv and all of our programming comes together there. You can find out more about the products that we talk about. You can find out more about, uh, well, you can follow the series that we cover. Mm -hmm. And so when you find a topic that you like, hey, you can punch the name into the search and you'll see every single video that we've ever talked about it on. Right. It's fantastic. That's category5.tv, great resource for you. And we've got 13 years of this behind us. This is episode number 659. 
Six fifty nine. Yeah. Wow. So there's been a lot of hours of video <laughs> here at Category Five. So appreciate you having here. Uh, I appreciate having you here. Um, I'd encourage you to please check out our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/Category Five, as a way to support us and make sure that I can keep Jeff coming back. Yes. Because I gotta, I gotta pay for those cupcakes somehow, folks. Well, you know what? The cupcakes will keep me coming back. That's it. So, I mean, they're not cheap. Bakery Fresh Cupcakes. I need your support. <laughs> if only that was all I had to pay for in a monthly... <laughs> that would be so nice. Wow. Very not good for the waistline. But, oh my gosh, those that looked really delightful. It, it was good. I, I was willing to split it with you, but you just... You wouldn't. <laughs> You're still trying to, like, when you getting healthy challenge, and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> COVID you're body. Good. You're looking good, man. You're looking good. I, uh, admittedly, I am down about uh, 20, 25 pounds. Fantastic. From, uh, from so you've years. actually lost more weight than me. Now, I was I was coming into this thing lighter than you. Uh, well, yeah. So my 14 pounds plus, you you can notice it if you look back at old videos. Yeah. But you're looking good. I can uh, see it. Uh, you know, it's funny. I don't see it, but then I, yeah. I look at myself every day. Look at a video from a year ago. Well, I could look at a video from like the last shooting in Studio D. Yeah, because I've I've lost twenty five pounds since then. Fantastic. Yeah, well done. So keep it up, man. Um, And you can actually join our Discord server. It's uh, just go to our website, Category Five TV. Click on Interact and join our Discord server. And there is a Discord uh, room called Biggest Loser, and it's just a place for us to get together as a community and encourage one another in our weight loss regime. And, uh, and know, it's been I really it. effective. I don't post there because I'm not really actively doing anything. But do you kind of watch? But I do watch. Yeah? I do enjoy all the various photos of like, oh, I've done 10,000 steps. I've done 20,000 steps. I have done 1,316. So you basically just woke up and came to the studio? Pretty much. Yeah. Because I think that hallway is almost a thousand steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 53.99, so not very... Not a lot of walking on this Wednesday. Fair enough. I'll tell you what, I was a lot of sitting at my desk answering calls. Yes. Thank you, Microsoft. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do better next time. Excellent. You check in. All right. So have a fantastic week, everybody. Um, just a heads up, we are going to have some strange weeks coming ahead. Um, so just so you know, if you're watching this and, and you like to tune in every single week, um, I'm going to be taking some vacation time. It's been a tough Good. time for everybody. I'm going to be taking some time off with my family. Excellent. I'm still not entirely sure if we're going to have a show next week. Okay. Um, but, uh, I'm definitely sure that I am going to take a couple weeks off at the start of August. So right. August 5th, August 12th, we will not be here. Okay. Uh, but know that my, my heart is in it, but I am going to take some time, some downtime. And, you need and some downtime. Man. Yeah. Unplug. And I've got the contractor coming in. We're going to be tearing this place apart over the next couple of weeks as well. Which is uh, weird because we just moved in. Yeah. <laughs> but all we have is a wall. <laughs> I it's, mean, come we've on. We've got nice lights. Yes. It's yeah, that's light. a plus. Yeah. But light. We're going to do more than that. <laughs> we're going to do more. So. Uh, So be watching for that. So I I will see you soon. Uh, I will be on Discord, and I'll be keeping you apprised if you are a patron or a Kickstarter supporter. So if you're not and you want to be kept apprised as to what's going on behind the scenes when we're off off the air over the next few weeks, um, make sure you support us on Patreon. And that's a great way to be able to participate, and you'll be able to see those behind-the-scenes videos as well. So there is stuff going on. I'm not completely gone just that we won't be broadcasting from the studio space uh, during that time. You're allowed to have a week or two off. I need a week or two off, dude. <laughs> it's been quite the year, I'll tell you yes. what, so far. So uh, yeah. we made it through. And even though we were off the air during the month of March, and so some might think, oh, well, you've already had some time off. Well, oh that that was intense because during COVID-19, we moved. Yes. So for me, that was not downtime whatsoever. No, but not only that, you tried to engage the community. And I think almost every day for the first, what, two months you were doing a coffee break? Yeah. That was an hour. So, I mean, you went from one hour a week. Half hour a week, yeah. To... to Plus production time. and Yeah, to doing multiple hours of coffee breaks. And I mean, there was a lot of good dynamic content. You know, it was community involvement, but still, like, that that was busy. And and that uh, that's a good point. I should raise that we will be having a coffee break this weekend. Oh, um, so just note that, you know, as you're watching this, um, we will have a coffee break on Sunday as planned, uh, but I'm going to take two weeks off. 
So fair enough. I've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> After 13 years, I've earned it. <laughs> That's right. Two weeks every 13 years. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. We'll go easy on you. So thanks everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for your support and for giving us the opportunity to to do this show. I mean, it's such a pr privilege to be on this side of the camera and to get to know our community through our Discord server as well. So have a wonderful few weeks, I guess, everybody, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.